Listen here. Battle passes are f***ing bullshit. The vast majority of my youth spent playing multiplayer games was spent playing both shooters and MMO games online. There's a certain amount of satisfaction gained from playing a game online and simply being better than the other person sitting at the computer playing their game against you. Some really great examples of that era are maybe Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the first one. It's a really great pure shooting experience that really opened up the online FPS experience to a much larger audience. Uh, World of Warcraft Burning Crusade it was in this era, Eye of the Storm, you know, all those classic Battlegrounds maps were really pure, really involved, and really satisfying experiences. Dota 2, Starcraft 2, Heart of the Swarm, some good Call of Duties, Burning Crusade into Wrath. This was really a golden era for playing video games against other human beings, just simply for the thrill. Sure, these games had various methods of progression, but they look nothing like their modern iterations. They were infinitely less expensive to play than their current iterations. They were more balanced, more fun, less depressing. You know why? They were less greed. Not no greed. But certainly less greed. There was definitely less greed. It's a really sad state of affairs that we as a community are excited by the team behind the new Halo game, um, 343, in developing Halo Infinite. You know, we as a community are really excited by them not screwing us over with a super aggressive uh, microtransactions, uh, fear of missing out tactics around like an expiring battle pass. See, 343 are doing things a little different with their game. A battle pass is forever, it doesn't expire, and you can select what experience you goes to uh, as far as rewards and stuff like that. It sounds really great, it sounds really player focused, and much less greedy than pretty much everything else that's out or is coming out. The fact that this is so far out of the norm that we're rallying around this decision is a pretty sad statement. I think we're all very aware that a consumer friendly experience has been dead in our industry for a really long time. And whilst 343 should be congratulated for bucking trends, um, treating their game as more than a cash cow, the fact that this is an exception rather than an expectation is pretty depressing. The decline is down to a million factors, a million variables, but the underlying cause is just greed, really. If you want to oversimplify the problem, that's an easy way to assess the situation. In so many facets of our life, we expect people who we interact with um, in a profession to care about us, whether they actually do or whether they should. We go to the supermarket and expect everyone working there to answer our beck and call, bend over backwards for us, do it all with a smile. We do the same through the fast food drive through uh, when we call up to buy insurance. Every facet of our life we have these expectations. Um, and even in some industries we have like guidelines, laws, codes of practice to ensure that Industries don't take advantage of people, um, and those working act in the best interest of the consumer affected by, you know, the result, whatever that may be. Think of um, maybe financial planners, um, insurance agents and brokers, mortgage brokers, loan officers, and, and more. There's, there's heaps more. Both walks of life, from fast food all the way to financial planners, we have an expectation that we're going to interact with these people and not feel shit afterwards, or get rorted or um, taken advantage of, in, in a general sense. Unfortunately, some industries and professions fall outside that expectation and we get screwed. Sometimes that screwing over leads to change, sometimes that screwing over doesn't. and just becomes expectation instead, or just something we have to accept. Video games sort of fall in the ladder. We expect every single game that comes out just to overreach for our money, try to screw us over financially, really. We expect it so much that not screwing over the customer has become like a selling point or a marketing point for video games these days. Um, for developers who are trying to get some good faith for their new release or their upcoming release, what have you. I'm serious, like, no microtransactions or no fear of missing out battle pass bullshit is, is, a, is a selling point these days. Now, I know that Fortnite is really some low-hanging fruit for this quarter thing. Um, it feels like if you're going to rant about the state of gaming, Fortnite is just a really easy subject to target. And I know this has been done to death and there's really nothing new that I can add to that dialogue. But I, mean, I, I just need to be clear, whilst Fortnite is probably the most obvious example that everyone will be familiar with, and they do share the lion's share of the blame for the current state of gaming, it's important to know that they're not really the pioneers that we make them out to be. Valve deserve all the good in the world for the positive things that they've done for PC gaming, um, and just gaming in general. 
But they sort of really screwed the pooch when it comes to introducing the world to popularize monetization methods, um, specifically the battle pass in this, this example. I ironically, one of those pure experiences that I mentioned earlier is one of the first sort of test models for this method. Um, and of course, I'm talking about the 2013 Dota 2 TI pass, whatever you want to call it. And then obviously the latter iterations of the TI pass. Uh, they also kind of screwed the pooch again when it came to the, for, uh, the Team Fortress 2 campaign pass thing. And after those two, everything just sort of went downhill from there. I mean, that's where our low hanging fruit comes in in Fortnite. Fortnite sort of explodes and it becomes this huge monolith that we know it is today, whilst also basing its income, its monetization method around that battle path sort of style, I guess you could say. Um, and it's pretty much, yeah, it's, it's all downhill from there. I mean, if companies like Valve and Epic can get away with this shit and their huge IPs, well then pretty much everyone else can as well. So they, they did, they tried to, um, and they are. And you know, now it's in everything. Some games supplement their free-to-play pay model with a battle pass. Some games charge you for the battle pass on top of the cost of buying a game. Some games charge you for the base game, the battle pass, and then paid cosmetics or even pay to win items. Some games charge you for a battle pass, then come to your house, kick your dog or some shit. <laughs> I, I, I made the last one up, but the point is, if we're getting excited about not getting screwed over for once, it's probably time to stop buying this shit. <laughs> Do you remember the last time you played like a shooter game like Call of Duty that was actually about crafting an easy to learn but hard to master pure online competitive gaming experience? rather than just a new shell for this year's uh, method of pushing skins, weapons, battle pass, crap down the throat. I, I can't think of a recent example at all. We used to have like, lots of great arena shooters that were just about skill, learning mechanics, but nothing anymore. It's not just shooters, I mean MMOs have cosmetic and boosting item cash shops now. Really how long is it before we see a World of Warcraft PvP? season pass that has better items in it than you can get from doing top tier raid gear or something along those lines. I mean it doesn't even have to be a multiplayer game anymore funnily enough. Remember how bad an example Middle Earth Shadow of War was out at launch? That has no player versus player. I mean you can visit other people's fortresses sure but it's not a multiplayer game really. And that had one of the worst loot box laden examples that I can think of uh, at all. And it was a single player game. If we had to let that slide, it sets a really bad precedent. <laughs> What's the solution? Uh, well, people are going to buy their sort of FIFA sports games and seasonal shooter battle passes regardless of how expensive or insulting they are, really. So waiting on the community to stop buying this isn't really the solution, regardless of how much the gaming community gets screwed over by the result. Uh, what is the solution? Is chemically castrating the developers who include battle passes in their games the solution? Yes. Yes it is. Is shooting them into the sun with a rocket the solution? Also yes. Yeah, those are good.